Hi everyone, welcome to Joe's Kitchen Capers. And today I'm doing an interview with Nicole. Nicole is a wife and young mum of two children aged six and four. She is a doula, primary school teacher, a hypnobirthing practitioner, and she's currently a gold leader for doTERRA. Now she's a fantastic leader of a large team and she also is the founder of Love Nest Nurture. Now, Nicole loves to share her story about incorporating essential oils into her family, and she's created a chemical-free home. So let's invite her in. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Jo. How are you? Good, thanks, love. How are you? Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. You have got a lot going on, so... <laughs> I don't really know how you do it. Can you explain to us just a little bit about, for anyone who doesn't know what a doula in particular and a hypnobirthing practitioner does? Yes, yeah, sure. Share with us a little bit of what you do. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, as a doula, I'm a birth support person, so I'm an emotional and physical support person for women and their birth partners. So I support them during their pregnancy, I attend the birth, and then I help them post-birth when bub comes home as well. And as a hypnobirthing practitioner, I help couples get into self-hypnosis during childbirth. So it's a really calm and relaxing way to give birth. It's all about visualizations, uh, deep meditation really, breathing, different breathing techniques to help get bub out. And it's a very positive environment, lots of positive affirmations and positive language to change the way that we, you know, we sort of look at the birthing world. Yeah, that sounds great. I could have done with you 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it was all a wee bit different then. Um, and what is your favourite role? I don't know if I said before that you were a primary school teacher as well. I don't know if I said that in the bio, but tell us a little bit about what your favourite role is now. Yeah, so I do have a few hats that I wear within my business, being the doula, the hypnobirthing side of things, a primary school teacher, and then you know, a mentor and a leader in doTERRA essential oils. So at the moment, my doula side of the work has had to be put to the side because it's very hard to focus on everything and give everything 100% um, when you've got so many different hands in the pie, so to speak. So being a, you know, a working from home mum of two little kids, and being on call, being a doula, is really, really difficult. And a husband that has to commute to work. So that yeah, side of things... Babies don't always come along. They you? don't. They're very, <laughs> they're very unpredictable. And we can never, you know, pick when they're going to arrive. So I've put that side of the business on hold for now. Um, it is something that I really love. And my focus now has moved to the essential oils because it's a passion of mine. Oh, great. So I know I am involved a little bit with doTERRA oils. I'm learning a bit as we go. Um, and I'm sure we're going to discuss them as we go through the interview today. So one thing I want to talk to you about is, you know a little bit about my brand and how I'm promoting healthy eating and good nutrition mm -hmm. um, for a healthier life. I want to know how you've incorporated that into your family and bringing up young children. Yeah, so lots of, um, we've, we've moved to pretty much a refined, refined sugar-free living, um, and that's purely... That's because, not easy to do. No, it isn't, not with yeah. two kids. Yeah, it's, it, is very, it is very hard, and, and look, we don't want to deprive them of their childhood and, you know, those memories that are being created and going to kids' birthday parties and things like that, but as a whole we are living, you know, or trying to live that lifestyle. And we made that decision before we had our eldest, who's now six and a half. So um, that was just a, a conscious decision that my husband and I made before she came along and and we've stuck to it. Great. How do you stop kids having sugar? <laughs> That's a multi-million dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> um, look, for us, it's all about education and everything that we do in our household with sustainable living and chemical free home and, and using the oils it's all about education and we've educated our children on how it makes their bodies feel and we now have the kids say oh you know mummy that's got too much sugar in it it's not making me feel very well and so they stop eating it there are of course times where you know they go to a party they like to overindulge as we all do and they go past that limit and then you know unfortunately pay the consequences later but to us it's all about educating them on what's good for them what's going into their bodies 
um, and and making them accountable. Yeah, and that's pretty impressive. I mean, they are very young, so to be knowing or feeling those changes in their body, I think that's a, a great achievement. Yeah, thank you. They they starting to feel. They know when their behaviour is changing because of you know if it's sugar or you know too much wheat or you know pasta things like that or yeah. it could be a physical feeling where their tummy's feeling sore or they're getting a bit gurgly and you know those sorts of things so it's just yeah educating them in in those areas so just talking a little bit about education and as your role as a primary school teacher let's take a bit of time and talk about that and the changes that you'll notice um i know for me when I'm shopping, I look in people's trolleys and think what they should and shouldn't have in there. Do you do that with kids' lunch boxes? <laughs> I most definitely do. <laughs> I do it at the supermarket as well. And it's really an eye-opener to, to see and to look into kids' lunch boxes and see what's being packed for them to eat. You know, there's a lot of packaged foods. And I know, you know, we're all busy these days. And, and I'm busy too. As a working mum, I'm also busy. But... I set aside time and it's about being organised and about, you know, being disciplined and, and working through your priorities. And I put that time aside so that I can meal prep for the kids' lunch boxes for the upcoming week. Um, they take no packaged foods to school. There's not one bit of rubbish in their lunch box. The only thing they might have is some orange skins. Um, but there's no plastic, there's no foil, there's no packaged fruit, free packaged foods at all. So yeah, that's great. Don't, didn't you have a Instagram page with lunch boxes on there? That you I have? do. My daughter actually um, has got her own Instagram page called Glory Box Creations, and I was taking photos. That's been put on hold. I've been a bit slack with that, so I need to get back into that. But every day that her lunch box was made, I would take a photo and post it on Instagram just to show and give people you know, lunchbox snack ideas. And they're super easy. They don't take a lot of time. Um, and and it's her involved in it as well, doesn't it? That's right. She, she, loves, she loves helping, or both the kids love helping to make things. And we're going to move that into, you know, move that into the garden because we're doing veggie patches and things like that and a bit more of sustainable living. So it's good to get the kids involved. And it's teaching them so much along the way. A lot. And they're at the perfect age. They are sponges. So everything that you say to them, they're soaking that in and they take everything on board. That's great. So talking still about the school thing, what do you notice when the kids are having these sugary things and packaged foods in their lunch boxes? What do you notice any behavioural changes or anything like that in your teaching through the day? There's definitely a huge change. If you've got children who aren't having preservatives and additives in their lunch boxes and they're having limited sugar, that even includes fruit because it's got fructose in it. Yeah. So we don't overdo it on the fruit. Take that into account. They don't. Your body doesn't know how to process fructose and and you know refined sugar. It processes it all the same. So it's you know it's teaching them that. But you definitely notice a difference with behaviour and focus is another big one. Um, and yeah, I think if all the children had an ad additive and preservative free lunchbox and lifestyle, then we would notice a huge change in allergies and, and behavior and, yeah. you know. And that's such a big thing at schools now because allergies, when my kids were at school, you know, you, you heard about the odd nut allergy, but there was nothing like there is today. What sort of things have you come across in that regard? These days you have nut free, wheat free, dairy free, um, everything free and a lot of daycares and schools are moving to a nut-free policy if, if they haven't already got it it will happen but everyone now, it's very limiting and you know when you're cooking raw foods as you know nuts go into a lot of things so we have to substitute with sunflower seeds and things like that which is fine but it can alter the taste sometimes too depending on well, what it you is might think, you might think back to our cheesecake I yeah well, seeds that we ended up with a purple base and we went for about... Hey, it tasted great. That was safe. <laughs> That's all good. Um, yeah, look, the allergy thing is a huge thing and that, you know, for someone who's really not involved in a lot of cooking or that sort of thing, that poses so many problems for putting a kid's lunchbox together. Oh, it does. Um, even, you know, my girls, there were kids with EpiPens at school because they had that anaphylactic reaction. Well, they're everywhere these days. Oh, really? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot more out there. All, all teachers have to be trained in EpiPen administration um, oh, because it's just so prominent. If the kids aren't carrying it, then it's at the office as well. So it's in two places. Oh gosh, yeah, that, that's mm. quite scary. It um, is. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about cooking at home. Mm -hmm. What sort of, um, or even talking about your oils. As far as the oils are concerned, how do you that how do you incorporate those into your cooking? So really, really easy. Um, my favourite one to cook with is peppermint essential oil. Right. That's Mint, chopped mint anything is one of my all-time favourites. So it goes into ice cream and, and raw chocolate and bliss balls and those sorts of things. So you're getting a lot of benefit from the oil as well. Then we move along to all your herb type oils. So your basil, rosemary, oregano, marjoram. All of those oils can be used in your cooking and replaced from the, the fresh herb. And there's definitely a place for fresh herbs, don't get me wrong. But if I can substitute with one drop of essential oil that is 50 to 70% times more potent and powerful than the herb, then I'm getting so many more benefits out of that. Yeah. I we've, do. All, we've all had soggy bunches of um, herbs in the back of our food. I just threw some out the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Yeah. yeah. One of those is coriander. I love it. And look, I love having the fresh herbs as well. But, um, you know, there is, I'm finding I use a lot of oils in my cooking now. One of my favourite ones has got to be lemon. Yeah. Um, I use that a lot. But as I've said to you before, sometimes with cooking you actually need the acid. You do. I will use the lemon juice, but then I'll just put a, a hint or a half a drop of lemon oil in it, which just boosts the flavour. That's right. And you're getting that, that extra benefit as well. So yeah. with, with your herbs... We've spoken about herbs and peppermint, and then you've got, as you said, your citrus oils, and lavender is another one that you can cook with and use in your cupcakes. Um, using your citrus oils in whether icings or fish dishes or, you know, bliss balls, incorporate them all in there. And a little, a little bit goes a long way. You only need one drop to make such a big difference in your meal. Yeah, I know. I have killed a few uh, guacamoles with too much coriander. Yeah. <laughs> even one drop sometimes. One well. drop can sometimes ruin your meal. So I always recommend using a toothpick, dipping yep. it in your oil and then swirling it around and having a taste because you can always add more, but you can't take it out. That is a great tip and I will use that yep. in the future. I think this guacamole in particular ended up with about six avocados. Just oh, like no. Balance the so, yes, look, we've all done it. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, okay, lovely. So what is... Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about school again a wee bit because statistics, I've been, with my nutrition papers, I've been doing a lot about obesity at the moment and I believe that in Australia now, one in four children is classified as obese. Um, is that something you've seen increasing? In Definitely. Definitely. Sometimes, you know, you can walk around school before school starts and you see these little kids who haven't even come to school yet, who haven't even started prep or preschool, and they're, you know, big. They're on the obese side. And then you have to look at the family as well, and you can see why that child's like that. Yeah. And yes, they may have a medical condition, but nine times out of ten, it's diet-related. Yeah. And you know, we have to look at mum and dad and, and the household and the upbringing and what is being fed to those children and what they're putting into their system and into them, you know, into their bodies that are making them like this. And then you, on top of all of that, you've got exercise as well. So it's not just all diet related. It's a whole combination of things. And if they see... You've got to look at the whole picture. You do. If they see mum and dad being active and healthy and, you know, eating all these nice whole foods, then they're going to take that on board. So then when they grow up and they have their own children, they're going to instill some of those things back into their family. Yeah. And look, we use, we use food for celebration and for so many factors in our life. But, you know, I, I think we also tend to be eating all the time now. Gone are the days that yeah. you just have breakfast, lunch or dinner. Everyone seems to be eating snacks all the time and it's, we don't need it. No. Not at all. No. Um, and look, the chemicals in the food is also a concern for me. I 
you know, making healthy lunch boxes and that some people don't even realise what's in the food. I bought wraps recently and they had so many preservatives in them. They're actually shelf stable till July next year. I mean, Which is that's scary. going to be a red flag to some yeah. people, but you know, they're a do they were a dollar or something at Aldi. So, you know, families that are struggling mm -hmm. are going to think that's a healthy option to make their kids a salad wrap or something. That's right. Um, so as far as chemicals, you know, in your bio, I spoke to you about or spoke about how you were creating a chemical-free environment in your home. Talk to us a little bit about that and some of the things that you put in place. Yeah, so the reason the reason for the shift for us, you know, to become a chemical free home was during my doula studies and you know, like yourself, you do a lot of research when you're when you're going through the process and to find out that babies are born with more than 150 chemicals and toxins in their umbilical cord yeah. was really really scary and it put it all into perspective for us. Now, you've just got to stop and think, how are these babies who have just been born earthside, they've spent nine months in the womb, how on earth are they yeah, born with all of these chemicals? Yeah. And the, the answer is mum. So we're carrying the baby and everything that we put on our skin, in our hair, what we're breathing in, what we're touching, the everything, we the water we drink, the air we breathe, it's all going, crossing the placenta and going into our unborn baby. So that was really scary. So now my passion is traveling around, teaching families, whoever mums, whoever you know is interested in how they can move to a, to a toxic free living and minimize those chemicals and toxins that their kids and their families are now exposed to. Yeah, that's, um, maybe we can do a dual thing and I can come and do the cooking. Yeah, definitely. We'll have something going on side by side. It's needed. <laughs> Yeah, look, it is needed and it's scary what's out there and the chemicals that are going into our body and people just aren't even aware of the chemicals that are sprayed. I mean, I know there's, um, you know, we talk about organic and that sort of thing, but a lot of young families are scared to even go that way because of the cost involved. Mm -hmm. uh, people think organic and they think of the expense. But, you know, what's the alternative, the illnesses and that, that we're all starting to, well, that are rife in the world that weren't there right. 20 years ago. So mm -hmm. it's got to have come from somewhere. And mm -hmm. I really believe that a lot of the stuff that we're eating is got to be, you know, you've got to be concerned about it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, okay. So let's. I'm a bit lost now. What to ask you? <laughs> Can I just go back to talking about the, um, you know, the cost of you saying about cost of organics yeah, and things yeah, like that? Sure. Um, you know, for us, and and I think you really have to, you have to work out why. Your why is very important. Why are you doing what you're doing? If the cost of buying organics is, you know, the issue, then you need to look at other ways that you can afford and manage that. And some of those ways that you can help to do that is. What, like what we're creating at home, we're creating our own veggie garden. We've planted some fruit trees. Now, I know a lot of people say they rent. There's other ways that you can do it. You can do things in pots and, and you know, have planter boxes and things like that. Nothing I've is... Just set a few up. I've just set a few up in my garden. On your balcony. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Oh. Everything is possible. And I don't think price of buying organic should be an issue. And it's taken me... It's taken me many years to, you know, to do that. It's not something that we did overnight. Um, it's been a... a it's, you, you've got to do things gradually. Because that's there, right. is, there is obviously cost involved. There is. And, but some stuff grows, like, prolifically and is so easy. You know, some of these herbs and things grow like mm -hmm. Yep. Um, you know, we're getting... My in-laws belong to a seed savers club up in Cairns. And they get all heirloom seeds. Now, we ring them and say, we would like some of this, this and this. And they get them for us. And we've got this nice stash of seeds going that yeah. in our garden, we can start growing them from seed. They're organic. They're originals. They're not crossed with anything. Yeah. Um, they are good quality trees and plants. So That's some of the things. You know, people need to 
get back to these basics and start saving seeds from their plants and things like that. We seem That's to have right. lost our way. It doesn't have to be an expensive process. No. It doesn't have to be a big, you know, if the setting up the garden is the expensive part, then you put a little bit away each month or from each of your pay. So yeah. then you can, you know, you can afford to do that. And it's all about choice and it's all about priority. If you prioritise... You go out and spend, get three or four cappuccinos a week. That's right. I was just about to say, if you get a coffee a day, yeah. you've just, you know... How much money have you? I won't say wasted because some of us like coffees. My husband's a coffee addict. You <laughs> like your coffee too. I do. <laughs> but you know, he's gone. Yeah. He's gone from yeah. He's gone from four or five coffees a day down to one, and that was from a, one a money saving um, aspect to a health aspect. So, you know, you've just got to prioritize what's important and why you're doing that. And yeah, and that's fine. Uh, balance isn't it? that's right there's so ways and means oh, around everything for you yeah oh well lovey i want to thank you so much for um our chat today we've we've covered a few things and i've really enjoyed it i just want um you to share what is important to you what message would you like to share with other young mums out here to make their life a bit healthier and where can we find you yeah, so my my mission and my passion, as I said, is to travel around educating and empowering people on how they can move to a chemical-free home. And I would love to be able to come into everyone's home. My goal is to do that slowly and, and you know, get to one household at a time and show you how you can make these wonderful products that are simple, easy, and extremely cost-effective and not to mention the health benefits that you're going to receive from them. and and show you how to do that and educate you on it. And it's it's an ongoing education process. When I'm working with people, I'm not, you know, showing you these things and then leaving you to do it on your own. I give you support the whole way through forever. So it's unlimited phone, email, face-to-face -face support. You can find me at www.lovenestnurture.com.au. My email, my phone number, everything's on there. And you can click to have a free one-on-one -on -one consultation or host your own class where I come to you and bring everything and you can try the oils and we educate you and, and friends and family around you. And, um, yeah, I just encourage you to make that slow change. And if you would like to do that, then I would love to be involved in helping you. Oh, thanks so much, Nicole. You spent, you were spreading just such an awesome message and I want to thank you again for joining me today and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Joe. See you soon. See you later. Bye. Bye.